Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm trying to grow my channel to 1000 subscribers, so please hit the subscribe button. So today we're going to look at the Leaving Cert poem, Meeting at Night by Robert Browning. Browning was born in 1812 and died 1889. He was born in London and educated at home by a tutor using books from his wealthy father's library. By age 12, he had written his first book of poetry. He later destroyed it as he couldn't find a publisher. Later, Browning became one of the most influential poets of the Victorian era. In 1845, he met the famous poet Elizabeth Barrett. They used to meet in secret because Elizabeth's father didn't like Robert. The poem was written during this time. They married the following year, moved to Italy, and when his wife died, he returned to England. Browning was buried in the Poets' Corner of Westminster Abbey, London. So here is Elizabeth Barrett Browning, his wife. Think about a secret relationship. What feelings does the person have when they are on their way to see their true love? Can you remember a time you couldn't wait to be with a person you loved? Meeting at night. Well, the poem is divided into two stanzas. Stanza one is about the sea journey by night and stanza two is the joy of the two lovers meeting. The grey sea and the long black land and the yellow half moon large and low and the startled little waves that leap in fiery ringlets from their sleep. As I gain the cove with pushing prow and quench its speed in the slushy sand. Then a mile of warm sea-scented beach, three fields to cross till a farm appears. A tap at the pane, the quick sharp scratch and blue spurt of a lighted match and the voice less loud through its joys and fears than the two hearts beating each to each. So describe in your own words the events of the poem. Think about which words captures the scene at sea. How does the poet capture the movement from the beach to the farmhouse? What words imply the meeting is secret? So this is one of the most sensual poems written during the Victorian times. Sensual in the fact that it gives pleasure to our five senses, sight, hearing, taste, smell and touch. So let's look at stanza one in more detail. The grey sea and the long black land. It's night time and these are the colours that he can make out. And the yellow half moon, large and low. The poet is sailing across the sea to the other side to meet his love. And he remembers the yellow half moon, large and low, a romantic image. And the startled little waves that leap. So he imagines as he goes through the sea, his boat is causing the waves to leap, to jump. And they are startled, they are frightened because they probably weren't expecting someone to be rowing in the dark of night. In fiery ringlets from their sleep. So he looks at the moonshine on the water, slightly reddish colour, and he thinks that the water moving looks like ringlets, which would be like red curly hair. And possibly his own wife had ringlets, or his girlfriend at the time. So he imagines that the sea had been sleeping, it's like personification, and when he came along in his boat, he woke up the sea and the sea turned into fiery ringlets. As I gain the cove with pushing prow. So he's going across slowly, slowly as he gains the cove, as he approaches the cove, with pushing prow, he starts to push the front of his boat. He starts to row faster. His boat starts to go faster as he arrives at the cove. And quench its speed 
in the slushy sand. So eventually he stops rowing and his boat slides into the slushy wet sand and this quenches its speed. This slows down or stops the speed of the boat. So stanza two. Then a mile of warm sea scented beach. So he arrives at the other side and his journey is not completed yet. He has to walk one mile along the warm sea scented beach so he can feel the warm sand, the warmth in the air from the daytime, it's night time now, and he can smell the salty sea as he walks. Three fields to cross till a farm appears. Still he doesn't have he hasn't reached his love's house he has to cross three more fields and eventually he sees a farmhouse in the distance and this is where she lives a tap at the pane the quick sharp scratch so he gives his secret knock to the pane of glass and she gives back a secret scratch sound from inside the window they have to be very quiet because they're meeting in secret as she lives with her father and mother and her father doesn't want her to meet Robert Brown, the poet. And blue spurt of a lighted match. He is outside the window and he can see inside that Elizabeth is lighting a match to light possibly an oil lamp. And he notices the blue flame of the lighted match. Spurt, it comes suddenly with energy. And a voice less loud through its joys and fears. So he can hear her whisper. He can hear in her voice the sound of happiness, but also the sound of fear in case they get caught. Then the two hearts beating each to each. So eventually they hug each other and the sound of their heartbeat beating heart to heart is louder than the sound of her voice. Which of the five senses does the poem capture? What do you think the last line means? Then two hearts beating each to each. What emotions is the speaker in the poem experiencing? What words give you this impression? What typical romantic imagery is used in this poem? The theme or main message. The main theme is the urgency, excitement and desire of the speaker in the poem to be with the girl he loves. The atmosphere of excitement and romance is created by vivid descriptions of nature. What are they? Well, it is night time. There is a yellow half moon, large and low. There is moonlight in the grey sky. It shines and sparkles on the little waves which look like red ringlets on a girl's hair. And it is a clear night. Personification. The little waves leap and are startled out of their sleep by a boat's passing. A sense of urgency is created by reference to speed. The boat is sailing at speed towards the land, its prow pushing through the water. Eventually, the boat reaches the cove at high speed where it slides into the slushy sands. He is in a hurry to meet the girl he loves and in stanza two, her reply to his tap at the pane is quick. Poetic techniques also are used to capture the atmosphere. So we'll start by looking at alliteration, which is repeated consonant sounds. Large and low. The repeated L adds romantic musicality to the description of the moon. Uh, uh. Pushing prow, p, p, shows us the speed of the boat. There's energy in those two words. Onomatopoeia where the sounds imitate the real object. In line six, and quench its speed in the slushy sands. The repetition of ch, s, sh, 
shows us the exact sound of the boat sliding into the soft, wet sands, repeating the sh-sh-sh sounds is also called sibilance when there's lots of s sounds assonance repeated vowel sounds long black land is the repeated a vowel yellow moon large and low the repeated o sounds these create a musical effect and add to the poem's romantic atmosphere Sentence length. The poem is made up of two long sentences. The first stanza ends in a full stop. The second stanza ends with an exclamation mark when they hug. This shows us that the speaker has no time to pause as his journey towards his true love. The repetition of and in both stanzas instead of full stops show the sense of urgency and excitement. The rhyme scheme is regular and adds to the musical atmosphere. Land rhymes with sand, A. Love, sorry, low and prow, and leap and sleep. So we have A, B, C, C, B, A in stanza one. And stanza two, beach, each, appears, fears, scratch, match. So we have sounds D, E, F, F, E, D. So how does the poet create a sensual effect in the poem? He uses all the techniques. He uses rhyme, assonance, alliteration, onomatopoeia, personification, reference to speed, sentence length, and vivid descriptions of nature. And these all appeal to our five senses. If you found this video helpful, please click the subscribe button and check back more for future videos. Best of luck in your exams.